All right, what we're going to start with is the first step of the simplex method, and that is to convert any LP into canonical form. So we usually have a series of steps that we can follow to, pop to convert it into canonical form. And, um, but, sorry, first I should explain what canonical form is. So you can kind of see at the top, I've got the, I've got a definition written out where it says an LP model with N variables and M constraints is in canonical form if it's of the form this giant thing so uh so we should probably try and explain what uh what each of these are so the, these are basically so you can see this is an objective function and the one thing the one thing you have to know that is so it's always going to be it should be a maximization problem and then what happens after that is that here we've got our normal set of constraints where basically our a11s our our a's are coefficients and our x1, x2, they're all variables. So, and then what happens, what happens is that, what usually happens with these is that they are additional variables that are added as a result of converting to canonical form. So we will eventually mention them later, but for now, just to put the names in your head, they are slack, artificial, and surplus variables. And we will cover we will cover those three of them in uh, we'll cover those three of them in the example below. So, effectively, like I said before, these variables will be added as a result of the conversion. And uh, one other thing to notice as well is that here we have all we here we have all equal signs. Where before the LP we will look before will have less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So, what usually happens is that. When we convert the canonical form, those inequalities become equalities after we have added the slack artificial or surplus variables. And the last the last feature is that, and it's kind of mentioned here where bi is greater than or equal to zero. The last feature is that on this right hand side, numbers should always be greater than or equal to zero. So now the reason we have a common format for LPs is that on a computational level, having a common format allows to say, okay, um, okay, the computer can now attack all LPs that way. And uh, effectively, effectively, this effectively having a common model just means that, uh, and also, sorry, having a common model that every LP can be converted to makes it easier in a computational sense. So, yeah, it's more about the computational sense than that kind of thing. But enough about that. We'll go on to the. We'll go on to an actual practical example. So we've got an LP model here. We want to convert it to canonical form. So so uh, so let me first highlight highlight a few different things that I see here. Is that we see a minimization. We want that to be a maximization. We see less than less than or greater than or equal to constraints. We want them to be equal equality constraints. We see negative signs on the right hand side. We want them to be positive, and. Last and lastly, every equality constraint should also have an artificial variable added to it. So I've actually got a list of um, instructions, which I've actually kind of got a list of rules, which I actually got to copy down. So, a summary, so I'll just copy that over, summary of the steps, and then I'll just pop it down here. So paste the image, and then we can, we can follow that step by step as we go. So, Okay, so some of the steps as possible. So the first one is that for a minimization problem, convert it to a maximization problem by multiplying the objective function by one. So the first step, um, I'm just trying to think about how to write it. So I guess I guess I'll just modify it straight up there. So this one, so we want to multiply the objective function by one, so that will become a maximize z. Uh, sorry, that will maximize z is equal to minus x one plus x two. All right, so that's so that's this one, and then I'm going to use a different color for the next one. So, for each negative right hand side coefficient, we want to multiply the corresponding functional constraint by minus one and change the direction of the inequality. So, so that means we've got we've got two right we've got two right hand sides which are negative. So we want to multiply the whole each of them by one, and remember that multiplying a whole inequality by one changes the sign of the inequality. So, so these two become. Uh, minus x1 minus x2 is greater than or equal to 5 and then and then x minus x1 is less than or equal to 10 okay so the next one for each variable x uh, xj which is unrestricted in sign 
we uh we won't cover this in terms of solving the LP, but this is just a little extra thing that um that you sh that sometimes can happen when we have unrestricted variables. So unrestricted variables is when usually we have all the variables greater than or equal to zero, but sometimes we have variables that can be any number, including negative numbers, and we call those unrestricted variables. However, we won't really be covering them so much, so no need to worry about them so much. So we can skip that. So. Now, for each greater than or equal to constraint, include a surplus variable as to obtain an equality constraint. So we've got one greater than or equal constraint here. So we want minus x1, minus x2. And then uh, we're going to we're gonna add, um, I'm actually wondering if, you, if you'll give me a second to, to double check. Oh, go, 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 go. I'm going to actually load somewhere. So... But basically what I basically what I'm kind of just looking up in the moment is that I just want to double check. Um oh, put that away. Part of me. Alright. Okay, so introduce new two, two new variables. Okay, so the surplus variables. So surplus variables I'm denoting by P, so that's gonna be equal to Oh, hold on. I've forgotten something. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry for wasting your time. Um I could so so I completely forgot that this x2 is actually unrestricted because it can be any real number, so I should deal with that first. So so now so this is coming to a stage where we need to start rewriting out the LP. So um so this is so I'll just start noting step three. So now, so what we want to do is that we, so in this case, we're going to replace x2 by x3 minus x4. So we're going to x3 minus x4, 2 equals x4, and then we're going to replace everything in the LP with it. The idea by replacing it with x3 minus x4, and where um, x3 and x4 are both greater than or equal to zero, is the idea is that we can represent any real number, just think about it for a second, we can represent any real number by x, x3 and minus x4, where both of them are positive real numbers. So I'll let you think about that. Uh, in terms of like, if you get if you want a negative number, then x4 has to be larger than x3, and then the other way around. So so now I'm going to rewrite it. So I'm going to rewrite the LP here. So max z is equal to negative x1 plus x2, and then for the first one, just got to write it out, negative x1. Now, I need to replace x2 by x3 minus x4. And this one's got a minus, so that's going to be minus x3 plus x4. And then that's going to be greater than or equal to 5. Sorry, not 0. That's going to be 5. Thank you. And then the second one is just going to be x1, which is going to be less than or equal to 10. There's no x2. And then the, the next constraint, x3 equals 3, so that's going to be x3 minus x4 is equal to 3. And then the non-negativity non constraint, so that's x1, and then there's x3, and then x4 is going to be greater than or equal to 0. Alright, now, next, step 4. So step 4 for each greater than or equal constraint, we're going to include a surplus variable. Surface variables I'm going to use by P because we actually have slack variables which usually tend to be introduced first, so I use S for them. So so this one will become uh, minus x1, minus x3, and then plus x4. Now, we're going to introduce the surplus variable, which I'm going to call P1. So that's going to be minus P1, and it's equal to 5. So the idea is that because this is a greater than or equal, equal to constraint, so the surplus is going to be that extra amount. So it turns out that the so the so the idea is that we have the actual value plus the surplus, and so so sorry when you get the optimal solution you're gonna get you're gonna get have some amount of surplus. So when you have the optimal solution subtract the surplus, that's gonna be your equality. So that's why it's gonna be minus p one, which I've done over here. But, and then also with the slack variable, that's when you want to add instead of subtract. So we'll get into that soon enough. So, so we want to add P1 is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, now I'm going to pick a different color. So, sorry. So I'll also label that step four. And then for step five. 
Step 5 for each equality constraint introduced an artificial variable. So that one is going to equal to an artificial artificial variable I'm going to name A. So that's going to be x3 minus x4 plus a1. One, one, oh, oh, I think my iPad has gone a little funny. Let's see. We'll, we'll double check. Okay. Maybe it's run out of battery. It's probably run out of battery. So if you'll pardon me, which is highly embarrassing. Um, so we've got an artificial variable. The idea of artificial artificial variables is that they are meant to equal zero. But the reason we add them is that we provide a bit of breathing space for the for the LP to kind of move around a bit. And so and so we'll see that happen later when we do the the two step the two phase simplex method. But for now, we'll kind of just follow this as a process, and then we'll, we'll see, we'll, we'll eventually see how it works. So there's going to be a1, and then that's going to be equal to 3. All right, and then that's step 5. 5, and then I'm going to pick one more color for step 6. This step 6, for each less than or equal to constraint, include a slack variable. So this one is going to be equal to x1 plus s1 is equal to 10. So again, the slack variable means that to the equality, and but when we get the optimal solution, there's probably going to be some like remaining. So the slack is that distance in between, and then so and that's where s one is greater than or equal to zero. So so now we've got all that. So I'm just going to add another page, and then I'm just going to add another page, and then re rewrite out that whole thing as it is. So to make sure that it's in canonical form. So the, the resulting form is max z is equal to negative x1 plus x2 such that uh, negative x1 minus x3 plus x4 minus p1 is equal to 5. Uh, actually, I should give I should leave a bit of space there. So this is going to be equal to 5. And then that's going to be x1 plus s1 is equal to 10. And then we got x3 minus x4 is going to be equal to 3. And then that's going to be plus a1. And then lastly, x1, x2, x4, p1, s1, a1 is great, all greater than or equal to 0. So once again, once again, we've got our, our, our normal set of constraints here. And then we've got all the extra constraints over here, which are, as I've said before, the slack, artificial, and surface variables. And so, and so you can match that pretty easily with, with the form up here. So effectively, that's how to convert the canon canonical form, making sure, to, making sure to ensure that a couple of features are there in place. So once we've done that in the canon canonical form, we can apply the other steps of the simplex method, which will kind of be a bit more calculate cal Will be will be a bit more which will require a bit more calculation. So, until then.